We're going to start with the nomination of J.D. Vance, sitting senator from Ohio, as vice presidential running mate of President Trump. It was a spectacular showmanship that the president put forward as he waited until literally the last moment. We didn't find out who the VP pick would be until probably 30 minutes before they started the nomination process at the convention for the vice presidential role on the ticket. We found out it was J.D. Vance. There had been a lot of speculation. I know some of our callers yesterday all thought it was going to be Vance. Uh, there were some head fakes there at the end. We heard uh, Glenn Youngkin may be the dark horse candidate, the governor of Virginia. But what had been reported for a long time, that the front runner, J.D. Vance, was indeed the pick of President Trump to be his running mate in this election. So we will get into that. We'll talk with Jordan about what he thinks it means for the campaign. And we will talk about uh, the left's reaction to it. In all of this talk of the left of toning down the rhetoric after the failed assassination attempt, the tragedy in Pennsylvania just over the weekend, we saw President Biden give three different addresses to the nation, two very quick ones. One was a readout in the Roosevelt Room of, of a briefing he'd received. And then we saw that Oval Office address. And the entire theme of the left has been tone down the rhetoric, tone down the rhetoric. You're seeing them doubling down on calling this administration, if they were to be elected, the most extreme in our history. That's from a DNC fundraising email they sent out yesterday. That if this ticket is elected, it will be the most extreme presidency in our history. Now, what does that tell you about what the left is saying when they say tone down the rhetoric? They don't mean their rhetoric. They mean conservative rhetoric. They want the conservatives to not talk about the important issues. They don't want you to incite things. But that's not the problem here. The problem here isn't that conservatives have been inciting violence against political candidates. It has been the Biden administration and the Biden campaign for so long and all the elected officials down the ballot that have been saying that Donald Trump and Republicans are a threat to our democracy, a threat. This is from Senator Chris Murphy, a colleague of J.D. Vance in the United States Senate. And this is how he characterized, it's a little bit long, but I think it's important to play the whole thing, the, the pick of J.D. Vance and what a Trump-Vance uh, campaign and an administration would look like. There is a very mainstream element of the Republican Party uh, and Trump's infrastructure that is very thoughtful about how they are going to end democratic norms. J.D. Vance is part of that infrastructure. Right? He has been fairly public in his antipathy for democracy. There is just a dominant strain in the Republican Party and some of the sort of thin intellectual veneer that covers Trumpism that J.D. Vance is a big part of that simply believes that democracy is antiquated, that it doesn't work any longer, that we would be better off if we just had one person in charge and the rest of us were stripped of our rights and that we uh, put men back in charge, that we created this nation uh, in a new uh, cloak of Christian nationalism. Um, that's where J.D. Vance comes from. Um, and he talks of good game. But if you really listen to him, he is being picked in part because he is going to help shape this transition away from democratic norms, this transition to a white patriarchal Christian dominated nation, something that's very different, right, than the, the nation that many of us have thought uh, we have been a part of this many years. The idea that they want to get rid of our, our democratic norms in our country. Uh, this is someone who that it was an Iraq war veteran, served his country, is the first millennial uh, to, to be uh, nominated to serve in an executive branch at this level. Uh, is So served his country, then attended you know, Yale Law School, wrote a book that was uh, loved by people on both sides of the aisle. I don't think it was you know, political at the time at all. Um, has been outspoken early on about his views about uh, President Trump early on. He's someone who switched uh, that um, was concerned about some of the rhetoric himself you know, in, in the early days of President Trump, and then got to know him and then got to see the work that was done and the issues. But you see what uh, Senator Murphy said, if you happen to be someone, even if you went to Yale Law School, even if you're uh, someone who should be on their side of the aisle 
and you happen to realize, hey, you know what, this this Make America Great uh, uh, Great Again message resonates with people because it works and because it's the it's the right way to fight in Washington. Um, you are an enemy of democracy. It, w- w- what is worse? I mean, if you uh, that's dictators. Dictators, I guess, are worse. But I mean, most dictators around the world are, are enemies of the United States. Uh, certainly, if, when we start calling people enemies of democracy, that's the kind of language you would reserve for the Ayatollah or for Vladimir Putin, maybe. Uh, not for a Republican-nominated vice presidential candidate and U.S. senator from Ohio. Jordan, the moment that the Truth Social announcement of J.D. Vance went out, I got a push notification from Vox, which, uh, you know, the the storied conservative uh, publication that Vox is. I'm kidding. But it, its headline was that Trump's VP pick is a naked authoritarian. They 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 had it ready to go to call him an authoritarian in the climate we're in. They went there immediately. This authoritarian line. What are they talking about? I mean, you realize they're just throwing this stuff out because he's now associated with President Trump. This was someone who wasn't afraid to go on uh, mainstream uh, networks and defend conservatism or defend the Republican Party, defend, uh, uh, fight back against the weaponization of our legal system like we talked about today uh, with the Kansas GOP, which people are really concerned about because of where those outcomes go when you criminalize uh, your political beliefs in America and the, the idea that everyone now is thinking, I mean, the uh, the amount of security changes you could imagine that have gone on uh, just in the last, every day here has changed uh, because of what happened on Saturday. But you know what's amazing about our country is that that happened on Saturday and that we're all here. And and and, and we nominated, a, you know, chosen by uh, President Trump, nominated a, a vice president at this uh, convention. And uh, again, people are gonna learn more and more about, you know, J.D. Vance, He was a name known because of the book. Uh, He is a name known because, of of course, his time in the U.S. Senate. And because he, I think he kind of scares the left because, one, uh, this is likely, if they, especially if they are to win, is someone who is set up to run for potentially president in four years. I mean, think about that, to have a president who is a millennial and is someone who is able to reach across, winning in Ohio, winning in the states that matter, and is able to take the same message that isn't afraid to, and is went to the same schools they did, you know. And they, they that always, you know, just just upsets it the most. How can this Yale Law graduate really take these views unless he's some kind of evil dictator? That must be the only way. He's an authoritarian, uh, like you said. You use these words, and crazy people do what they did on Saturday. If you use these words to describe uh, mainstream political actors in our country. And I don't think you can get any more mainstream than being a nominee on the Republican Party or a nominee on the Democrat Party, one of the two biggest, the two political uh, parties, biggest parties in our country, in our lifetimes.